back to the Spin Rack, presented by Comics Remixed, The Lockup, Episode 8. As always, I'm your host, Big B. Brian Adams, joining my co-host, Junior Ruiz. Let's uh, just dive right into it. Let's talk Illumination Chamber, which we actually got to view most of together, mm-hmm. since we're only, what, two weeks out now from this Sunday? Um, oh, no, a week. It was last week. It was last, last week. Last, a week ago Sunday. Yeah. It was actually a pretty decent pay-per-view. I was impressed with most of the matches. Yeah. The Elimination Chamber Tag Team Championship match was really a, it was a really good match. Yeah, I liked that. I thought um, that was really good. You know, I, I kind of was surprised that they let New Day walk out with it. Mm-hmm. I really thought they were going to give it to the primetime players. Well, you know, they got a match of money in the bank. Well, yeah, so obviously, that's what I was about to say, is it's obviously setting up. Well, they said that it's not going to be, that they're going to beef, or excuse me, feud with uh, the players going into the summer. So it might not, it might like if one, I, I have a feeling the players will win this one. Mm-hmm. And then next pay-per-view, it's a rubber match and they get a the new day initiates their rematch and then they get it back. It'll be back and forth for a while. That kind of upsets me because there's a lot of great tag teams that, that I think they need to move those belts around a little more. See, but then what does that even mean now? That, that means holding a championship is nothing because you hold it just to let it go the next week. Yeah. I'm not saying a week, a couple months. Well, just, you know, as an example. You know, whatever. I mean, I guess it works. I, I was going to, you know, I, it just occurred to me, this is totally off subject the other day, that has there been a black WWE World Heavyweight Champion? Why not? You can't nod your head and shrug. Oh, sorry. sorry. I, you have to speak. I, I don't know. <laughs> no, I just thought that they could. I was, uh,. I was reading an interview with Booker T, and he was talking about his new book and stuff, and I'm actually kind of interested in reading Booker T's new book. Uh, it just occurred to me there's never been a black... And why not? Like, there's been some decent... I, and you can't count The Rock, because he, he's Samoan. Right. I don't care yeah, if his no. dad was black. He's Samoan. Yeah. It's, uh, so is this like WWE's penance to the black community by not having a black WWE champion? I mean, there's not even anybody in the Main upper echelon picture. right now that's... Yeah. Well, no. Mark Henry was the World Heavyweight Champion. Oh, was he? Yeah, not the WWE. Remember when they had the two different belts? Yeah, the, the WCW was, the, Championship. Yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah, he was... That's what I was just thinking. Well, yeah, Booker T was, too. Yeah. Five times, five times, five times. He was five-time five time WCW. Five times. Not in WWE. Well, he was champion WWE, but yeah, you but don't count that. Yeah, but it was the same belt. Yeah, but you don't count that as a five-time World... Because he was the five-time WCW World Heavyweight yeah, Champion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that, but still. Why was Booker T never WWE champion? I don't know. Vince McMahon's racist. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> I know. Man, was, we are totally not getting any kind of sponsorship. Of or why, hey, Nobody's going to want to ever be on our show. Why? Because I just said that there should be a black WWE champion. Because you said Vince was a racist. Well, you know, he's older. The old people can't be helped for their backwards beliefs. You can't hold it against them. They didn't know better. You know? Please be on our show. Yeah, I would love to have Vince on our show. I'm not sure what I would say to him, but I would actually rather have Triple H on. I think he'd be a better better interview. Yeah. But not if that's ever going to happen. No. (laughs) Now we're just pulling it strong. We can't get local guys to be on a damn show. Yeah, right? So, WWE Divas match. Nikki Bella versus Paige versus Naomi. My English muffin. Your English crumpet. Word. She's awesome, dude. All three of them, great, top of the line divas. All three. Obviously, Nikki Bella walked out with that. Yeah. No complaints on that. But you know what? Nikki doesn't need neither. Neither Bella needs to hold the belt. You know, like they've transcended what divas can be. You know, like they don't need the belt um, to be known. Like they've they've gone to that plateau. Kind of like how Cena doesn't need a title because everybody knows who Cena is right. now. It's absolutely. the same thing. Yeah, no, they, they absolutely do not need the belt anymore, to, but, you know, whatever. Uh, I think it, she'll eventually drop it to Paige or, or Naomi. Well, don't they have another... Who's she fighting at uh, Money in the Bank? Paige. Yeah. And then... Uh, well, didn't they fight on Raw last week? Was it a rem- or was that, was that just announcing that they're fighting at Money in the yeah, Bank? No, they actually did fight on Raw. Okay. And it was a pretty solid match, um, which, in my opinion, Nikki Bella was dominating... And then Paige started coming back. The Bellas pulled some twin magic, yeah, which I haven't seen in a long time. And how stupid do you have to be for, to fall for that now? Back then, I could remember because yeah, they I looked could identical. But now they're two different shades, dude. They're two, two. And one smaller, yeah. 
Like they're completely and they're, different. Yeah, they're, they're, they're like complete opposites now. That's like me and you doing a switch. Right? That would never work. Never. Good old WWE refs. Good old WWE refs. But solid match. Uh, I can't compare that. John Cena versus Kevin Owens. My match of the night right there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great match out of both of those guys. Obviously, it's the right time to move Owens up. I mean, I yeah. didn't think it was. Um, that match proved to me that he's ready. Yeah. Um, he's been cutting some... I was just going to say, what about promos that they've been going He's been back cutting some there. excellent promos. There's actually word that... Dude, before you get to that, the promo, you want to talk promos, the the promo that John Cena cut on Kevin Owens' Monday Night Raw, that was great. When he pointed to the, 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 the person in the crowd, and he's like, look, that person's beating cancer. Yeah. Or whatever. They're like, just that promo, man. That, Dude, that was such makes, a solid like, promo. Cena, as, as much as I am not a fan of the character John Cena, yeah. like, that's what makes him transcend the sport. Yeah, he just he really got into it, and that was like a very, very strong promo actually from the both of them. But I think honestly, I'd have to give that promo to Cena in the in the battle of the of the promo war. Yeah, from Cena's Raw and uh, Owen SmackDown, which I just saw this morning. Yeah, <clears throat> it was definitely stronger. Yeah, but Owen's whole like calling Cena out that his whole hustle, loyalty, respect thing is just bullshit, and that. You know, that's that's not how things really are. I, I appreciate the man's point of view. Yeah. Um, there's actually rumors saying that he's going to drop a loss to Cena in the rematch. I don't think that's the right move. I heard the opposite. Really? I heard that the WWE the people want to book him as winning. They want him to continue this, uh, this momentum he's got going. Because if he lost the match, I mean... You know, you want him to win. If he lose, everybody falls to Cena. You know, like, mm-hmm. and then what? You know. Yeah, that's. I I think it would be a a bad move, because you're just building him up. Cena's, in my opinion, Cena won't be around in five years. We don't know that. If he is, I'll be surprised. Um, he's actually obviously got a lot of love that Jericho podcast he was on. It didn't sound like he wanted to go anywhere. Right. I mean, we'll see. But to give Kevin Owens a loss would just be a mistake no, right no. now. It would kill the momentum they're building with him. Uh, the next match tonight was Neville versus Bo Dallas. Uh, I don't think we watched that one. I think we just talked that entire match. Kind we, of just... we probably did because I think, like I've said before. That's when we were looking for the cup. I uh, Yeah, which we actually have that. Oh, you yeah, found it? Yeah, found it. Nice. So, uh, like I said, this is Dude, something. Wait, I got to ask you. Where the hell was it? It was just randomly up in the closet in nice. his room. Nice, nice. I'm going to have to, just, whatever. I'm not cutting anything off. <laughs> That's fine. Junior was here for the pay-per-view with his child. Our children were playing together. A cup disappeared. I think my two-year-old was just trying to jack your, your, <laughs> just, your daughter's cup because he liked it so much. Um, yeah, this is a match that you've seen a billion times at NXT. I think I've said this before. Mm-hmm. On the show, I, I know I've said it to you. I know I said it when we saw it. Yeah. I was just like, whatever. Yeah. Winner Neville, as it were you surprised really? No. I mean I, I don't know who they're also they're gonna put him up against, but whatever. Well they got him in the money in the bank ladder match. Yeah, they do now. But I mean prior yeah. to what in the pay per view who is he gonna wrestle? Is yeah, yeah. Uh I see in Elimination Chamber. Dude, total shocked. Yeah, that was totally good. shocked. Great match. Uh the Mark Henry busting out early was kind of funny. Mm-hmm. I wonder if that was planned or if it was just like an accident. Right. And then, you know, every all the internet, I don't know if they threw Mark Henry in there to swerve because everybody was reporting that it was supposed to be Bray Wyatt. Mm-hmm. And we even said it, well, because we read it off of WrestleZone. But uh, they they swerved with uh, Mark Henry. You know, and I read that uh, it was actually supposed to be Sheamus that was supposed to walk away with the title. Really? But they decided to give it to Ryback because they weren't sure how Sheamus' schedule was going to go as he's filming Turtles. Well, I felt like giving it to Ryback was a good move. That guy needs... He looks good with the belt around his waist, I will admit. It just, it fits him. And as as I've said in previously, that he's... I think last week I said he works really well as a face. Yes. I think this new turn for him has been really good. He's got a lot of momentum. This is good push for him to get him into the title picture, I feel like. I can also... Eventually. I feel that him holding the IC belt, believe it or not, like when Brian held it and you know, and they were trying to build up the relevance again, mm-hmm. I think, honestly, if they keep Ryback at that point where he's like he's a good face, but he's one of those unbeatable faces, almost like when he first appeared and he was right. just smashing people, mm-hmm. but he does that with the title. 
and he and you know and he he focuses like you know hey I'm the champ nobody can beat me I'm taking everybody down that I think with the fans still behind him will elevate that title to where they wanted to get it yeah no absolutely and I think that the the IC title deserves the, the prestige yes that has been lost on hmm. it excuse me now to the final match tonight I feel like we skipped one no that was everything oh, as, hmm. as far as the results page okay no that's cool I mean it's I just. All right. That's where you you actually I think you left. I left right before the main event. Yeah. So and which was actually a pretty solid match out of Ambrose and Rollins. Mm-hmm. I think it's kind of funny to give Ambrose a push into the title picture so quick. But those guys, the chemistry between them has been really good. After the match, they've had really good banter back and forth. Yeah. Uh, man, I really like Dean Ambrose with that belt. Really. I don't know why, but I I like it. Nice. And uh, it's kind of a shame that in classic WWE style, they gave Ambrose the match, but found a technicality for him not to have the belt. Yeah, yeah. But being Ambrose, he took the belt anyway. I remember when I got to the house and I was reading the results, like, I saw the headline says, uh, Ambrose wins, everyone's shocked, Rollins did not expect this. And I'm thinking, oh man. Or no, uh, Rollin, everyone's shocked at the the, uh, the main event or whatever. And I'm like, no way. Roman Reigns turned. That's immediately yeah, what that's, I thought. Yeah, you were saying the whole night. You were like, I think Roman Reigns is going to do a heel turn. That's exactly what I thought when I read that headline. You were like, oh, unexpected. Nobody, you know. And I'm like, whoa. And then when I read it, I was like, oh, okay. No, no problem. Yeah, no, no, what happened? Just, a, just DQ win for him, which was kind of lame. But I like the, the, the rivalry they're setting up between them. Yeah. Um, it's been good. Rollins actually came out on SmackDown by himself and talked about how he didn't need anybody. So if, I, yeah. if I'm really hoping that this is pushing him to the next level and that he'll come out at the next pay-per-view, uh, money in the bank, right? And I hope that he like doesn't need anyone's help because that's what I want to see. I want to see a return to some solid heels that can actually win matches without a bazillion people interfering outside. Yeah, it's just like, come on. You know, J&J you know, a joke. Kind of and then... What side are you on, Kane? Pick one. You like, know? you know, The Rock, when he was a heel, used to win matches without help some of the time. <laughs> you know? Without uh, the nation. Yeah, it's, it's you know, it's sometimes it's just time to move past that stuff. Like I said, I've been saying it for a long time. I've really come to like Seth Rollins, and I would like to see him establish himself as a heel that can win matches on his own. Right. You know, it's, it's something that I feel like is missing from the current WWE state. Word. Okay, so it's only we watched Austin Podcast after Raw this week. Yeah. Um, we watched this segment because I haven't got a chance to see it, which is I should be slapped because Stone Cold Podcast is the best. Uh, <clears throat> Austin versus Lesnar, WrestleMania 32. Dude, I think that would be awesome. I think that would sell so many people that don't currently watch wrestling anymore. Yeah. I think would be game just to see Austin back in another match. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that. You know, and uh, on Austin's podcast for the last couple months, he's been stating, you know, he's working out, he's getting back into his workout, he needs to get cut. And there have been rumors for not for forever now that he's going to come back for one more match. And, you know, because he never officially had a retirement match. You know, he had the last match against Rock at WrestleMania, what, 19? Mm-hmm. And that was it, and he just rolled off into the sunset. Um, you know, it would be a good thing if the writer, if if this did happen, one of the storylines they can bring up was how Austin took his ball and went home in two thousand two because of the King of the Ring storyline where he was supposed to put Brock over, and he didn't want to. He just felt, you know, why? You know, I've got all this momentum going. I get you're trying to build the rookie, but there's no build up to our match, and this is a pay per view match. You're gonna air it on Raw, you know. Yeah, totally. So, I mean, they can they can use that as a catalyst in a way for the match. Now, um, as Russell Zone was reporting, the issue with that match would be, you know, Brock Lesnar being the suplex king right now. And, you know, you've got to have a strong neck and strong shoulders to take those suplexes. Can Austin do that, especially with his history with his neck? I'm not doubting his shoulders because, you know, you've seen Austin on the podcast. Yeah. You know, the guy's he, just getting cut. He looks really good. Yeah. I would love to see Austin come back, but you bring up a valid point. Like, he could possibly, like, get, I mean, it's not like cause there's a career to end. Right. But would you want to see Stone Cold, like, you know, 
confined to a wheelchair because he had to have another match. Right, and yeah. went poorly for him. You know, and Hogan is still petitioning for a match, like, super hard. Yeah, Vince is said to be behind it, but... Who wants to see Hogan wrestling? I don't want to see Hogan wrestle. Yeah. I don't. And another thing, he wouldn't... Even if he, he really did get into shape and, you know, he was in shape enough to carry a match and stuff like that, he can't do the leg drop in the big boot anymore because of his back. Yeah. You know, even if you're in shape and you can go with a match, there's still certain things you can and can't yeah, do. Yeah, that's the thing. I wouldn't want to see Stone Cold in that match unless Stone Cold is up to par to take it, which from the way the man looks, he looks phenomenal. Unlike Hulk Hogan, who, like, I just... Yeah. I mean, he walks like an old man, like he could like barely walk down to the ring. Yeah. I don't want to see a match with him. It's It's... I didn't want to see him at, what was it, WrestleMania 20 when he wrestled The Rock? 18. 18? I didn't even want to see that. One of my favorite matches of all time. Really? Yes. Oh, wow. No, I was... Top five, easy. Not a fan of that match at all. I think it was the crowd that helped put that match over. Yeah. Definitely. But I wouldn't want to, just, you know, not for me. Well, the rumored matches, because like I was telling you earlier, being that it's in Texas and they got the stadium and they want to set an attendance record, they're looking at it as all hands on deck. So... They're looking at possibilities of The Rock versus Triple H, which, you know, have already been rumored here and there. And then, you know, they're looking at possibly bringing Ronda Rousey back. And they kind of um, set that, they kind of set The Rock versus Triple H up at WrestleMania this year. Yeah, too. and then a couple uh, Raws and SmackDowns mm-hmm. prior to that. Um, so they got Rock versus Triple H rumor, the Ronda Rousey stuff, Hogan wanting, Hogan and Cena both wanting to face off. Well, the question is, can they? Um, the Brock Lesnar, Austin. Undertaker versus whoever he's going to fight. Because you know he's coming back for another one. Especially if it's in its backyard. You know? And that's another thing, considering it's in... Do we do we finally get Undertaker Sting? Because Sting said it the night after WrestleMania. He came out on Raw, like after Raw on the network. And he said, he's like, I'm willing to do whatever. Um, You know, the ball's in WWE's court. And then the crowd starts chanting Undertaker, and he starts nodding, and he's like, yeah. He's like, let's, you know, it's up to WWE. Okay, so now if they did that match. Taker versus Sting. Would you not, like, I would feel like it would be a slap in the face. Sting needs a win. Yes, I was just going to say. And is it going to be point, on Taker? At this point, I would say, yeah, go ahead and give Sting the win over Taker. Because the streak doesn't matter anymore. That's gone. And you know what? Him beating Bray Wyatt kind of legitimized Brock Lesnar's win. Because it doesn't make Taker look like he's just some pushover. Right. So I think you've already had that match mm-hmm. to where he's come back from the loss of the streak. Yeah. You could drop it to Sting. They could have an excellent match. It'd be good, man. Yeah, maybe have a rematch at SummerSlam or something. It'd Who be knows? Good. Um, I, I, my only thing That's is... That's what, if, five matches right there? Yeah. And it's uh, just all involving legends? Right, all still, involving legends. Then you still get you know whatever match Rollins is in, whatever right. match Ambrose and and Reigns and you the know. IC title and the yeah. tag team title and the Divas. That'd belt. be a hell of a stack. Be a hell of a stack. Deck that would be seriously one of those WrestleManias where there's got to be a table set up and there's food everywhere and there's like a crowded living room. Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. And like everybody is we like get this place packed. Let's do it. We got we'll the get. we have this open. We have to move the couch so people can sit outside. <laughs> right. <laughs> totally. Got we your can, neighbors sitting up on the, stick on the lawn. Tony up there. and John in the corner there because they're little. <laughs> Bring in like an extra couch, a couple couches. Yeah, rent some folding chairs. Totally. Like, do it. Be excellent. That, that would be like. Indian a, style on the floor. That would be a stacked deck WrestleMania for sure. For We're sure. going to start planning it then. Yeah, hey, if whatever, man. Like I said, SummerSlam. We're going to get something going on SummerSlam. SummerSlam? For sure. Um, I already told uh, CC. Because he talked about wanting to get together sometime. Who the hell is CC? Carrie. Carrie, oh. the camera guy. I'm like, Carrie that used to be camera guy. <laughs> say he would come by? Yeah, he said he'd let him know. I know Book Out would show up. Um, I doubt Bloomquist would show up because he doesn't go anywhere. We could get some peeps over here. Oh, yeah. For sure. John show up. As long as he had a ride. SummerSlam. Obviously, Lesnar's going to be returning for SummerSlam. Yeah. They've already said he's going to be back on TV. Prior Next to SummerSlam. Month. Yeah, in July. But they're saying that he's going to have a match at Battleground. He's not going to be in, on TV really up to that ma- leading up to that match, and they're not saying who it's going to be. It's Just weird. there's a possibility that Lesnar's going to have a match at Battleground. That's weird. <clears throat> I couldn't even speculate on who it's going to be. Hmm. Maybe it's a number one contenders match? Could be. Who's he going to face? Roman Reigns? I'd like to see that rematch. 
That was, you know what? All, it was all... a good. It was a good match. Yeah. I as much as I'm not like that. That match, Brock Lesnar helped legitimize Roman Reigns. That match was what it was star. supposed to be. It wasn't a wrestling match. It was a fight. I think the part that really got me was every time that uh, Lesnar would smack him and he busted his mouth open and Reigns is just the sitting smile. there laughing yeah. like, yeah, let's go. No, that was, I was, like, that that was, was good that was stuff, cool. man. That was good stuff. What else we got, man? Because I'm sure we've been blabbing for a while here. Um, Sami Zayn, Rusev, Tyson Kidd, all injured. Sami Zayn, they're saying it's going to be out for... A long while. For six months, I think it was. Apparently, I don't know when, Tyson Kidd was wrestling a match against Samoa Joe and injured his neck. It was uh, prior to Superstars. Yeah. But it wasn't taped. It was okay. just a dark match. All right. And they said that the the way Tyson Kidd got hurt was something that just, it was not avoidable. You know, it wasn't one of those things where they just made a mistake. It was just the way it happened. And then Rusev, they're saying when he comes back, he's going to have to wrestle in boots from now on. Yeah. Which I like, it's whatever. It's, you know? it's about time the guy's been doing the barefoot thing for the, the whole time. I mean, why yeah. not? Um, it it sucks for Kid because I felt like him and Cesaro had built a really good. Yeah. Tag so team now here's really what well. happens to Cesaro now. Yeah. What happens with Cesaro now? Because we saw that when Cesaro was on his own, he really wasn't doing anything, and his rep didn't start coming back up, or his popularity didn't start coming back up again until he teamed with Kid. Now the Kid's out of the picture. What do they put Cesaro with the other uh, with the USO who's not injured? Yeah. You know, yeah, he hasn't been on TV at all since that happened. Exactly. Well, who knows? Like, hey, he could just sit on the sidelines, man. Until we'll call him comes Cesaro. Back. Cesaro. <laughs> Usaro. Usaro. That's I like that. That's that's better. Um. Oh, apparently the reformed tag team of Harper and. Uh, Rowan, Ro- they're using Rowan the, and the, Harper the, are using the three D. Yeah, I was gonna ask you cool. what did you what did you feel about that because I know uh, Harper's <clears throat> your guy. I'm a, a big fan of the Dudley Boys. Uh, it's kind of cool to see those guys back together because they weren't really doing anything with them, right? And it's pretty awesome that they're doing doing the Dudley Death Drop. I, I kind of dig that. That's cool. Um, you know, oh, Ring of Honor premiered. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> I um, hate that we don't have Destination America yeah, at the that, house. That's, so that's a can't. bummer, man. That's really a bummer. I almost feel like, you know, we'll just I'll just tape them. And we can come over and watch a couple every week after we record. Nice. Uh, it was good, man. The Briscoes had a tag team match. I can't remember who their opponents were. Those guys are nuts. Um, it was. I was impressed, you know, all around. It was, uh, it was wrestling, man, you know. Um, JR went into this huge rant. Yeah. That I actually, uh, it's, it's, I don't really know if I'm going to have time to quote JR. Um, yeah, I, I probably could. What'd you hear, um, now, while you're looking for that, that, uh, WWE decided to sign Samoa Joe full time? I did. Yeah. I did, but I also read that they're letting him finish his obligations. That Through he's August, set up yeah. There. But his new full-time contract kicks in in September. And then um, they said that the, now there's interest in uh, bringing AJ Styles over to WWE. Really? Yeah, and uh, they asked AJ about it, and AJ's exact words were, I'll go wherever it it benefits my family. And he's like, but right now I'm dedicated to Ring of Honor and New Japan. Right on. Which is um, because TNA made him a big money offer, and they also wanted him to be part of Slammiversary and, and be inducted to the TNA Hall of Fame, and he declined it. Really? Yeah. Wow. So I've got it. All JR's right. rant from his blog. JR said, I quote, I've said here many times that I hope that all wrestling promotions are successful and make it through their respective rough waters that many are currently encountering. Nonetheless, some within these organizations can't handle constructive criticism and seem to take some things I say personally, which is both childish and unprofessional. It is my prerogative to criticize bad acting, overscripted promos, no selling major moves, illogical creative, and other eye rolling creative content in an attempt to reinvent what isn't broken. I think that I paid my dues, earned a decent track record within the biz, and above all, I am still a fan of over 50 years. The vast majority of wrestlers these days are not good promo talents. Reason being is that creative staff seemingly have to justify their existence by role-playing with these individuals and scripting virtually every word that the talents say. That system is both outdated and unproductive as fans today can recognize a wrestler reciting a promo from memory instead of 
their heart within a few sentences. Wrestling is best when it comes from a logical, realistic place and is executed inside the ring as an athletic contest built on common sense and not an acrobatic show that exposes the business as a sham with no selling and a complete lack of some talent's ability to properly apply an actual wrestling hold. The faster, t- <laughs> the faster some talent perform, the louder they'll tell us that their skill set is lacking and that they're trying to get on by sensationalism instead of realism. I get taken to task because of my 21 years in WWE as if I'm, as if I'm picking on the TNAs, the Ring of Honors, the Lucha Undergrounds, etc. of the world when nothing could be further from the truth. I've dedicated 40 plus years of my life to wrestling business, probably, I might add, and I would do it all over again if the opportunity presented itself. But that isn't going to happen. I want the business to be healthy and to prosper long after I'm gone The future generations, for future generations to enjoy. At the rate of some things that I'm watching each week on TV are happening, I'm not sure that's going to occur. Well, he sounds like everybody else. Basically, just everybody realizes, I mean... Excluding children because children don't, and it's not a knock against kids who are fans. It's just they don't get the backstage politics and they don't understand what came before. Mm-hmm. Um, it's you know just wrestling fans just saying you know hey, it was better back then when you did it this way. It's too constricted now. You know you need to work on your promos. You need to work on this. You need to work on that. And people can't handle that. I think uh, you know I was going to get into this this week, but we don't really have time, so I'm going to bring it up. I know I told you before we started the show, and almost every week that we start a show. I say TNA still sucks. Next <laughs> week, I promise to deliver on exact specific reasons why I dislike TNA. Um, he's right about a lot, um, but I think mostly his criticisms, and I think our criticisms are mostly on WWE. Well, because they're the big dog in and the yard. TNA. Yeah. Because TNA, TNA bills itself as being the, the second best, but they're not. Right. I mean, in my opinion... Ring of Honor, which just premiered. I've watched one show. I've been watching TNA for six months. There is not really maybe one or two things that have maybe like, oh, maybe I should check this out. But it's not like, oh, I have to. Dude, I cannot wait till next Wednesday and the new episode of Ring of Honor. Much like Lucha Underground, every week I can't wait to see the next Lucha Underground. Nice. TNA just, you know, and it, he's completely right. Creative. There's so much, like, they're they're trying to do too much. Mm -hmm. And the guys need to be let loose to say what they're going to say. Because he's right. You can totally tell when a guy's cutting a promo and they're reading it off of a script rather than, here's some talking points, go. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, But then not everyone could do that. But I think WWE has enough caliber of talent to pull that off if they just take the reins. They 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 have enough people there to teach them. Exactly. Here's some bullet points. This is what you do. You know, that's the point of NXT. Exactly. I think people are forgetting that it's a developmental brand. Mm-hmm. And when they're not, when you're not watching it for an hour a week, those guys are in the performance center working on their movesets, working on their promos, you know? And that's another thing, man, is NXT, like, it's awesome. Yeah. The quality of the show on NXT is so much better than WWE. And I think they need to take some of what they're doing down there and bring it up to the big show because it would help. I think it's because NXT is such a tightly run ship where it's the main Raw and SmackDown or there's so many cooks in the kitchen, Mm -hmm. you know? And it shows because, uh, and I'm not, again, I'm not saying the Attitude Era, anything, but if you look at around that time period, there was only like three or four writers on Raw and there's only three or four writers on SmackDown. That was it. And then later on, when Paul Heyman became head of creative for SmackDown, it was him and his like two or three guys that were like really close, and the same with Raw. Excuse me. But once you put too many, like I said, too many. It's funny in the that kitchen. you said that about Paul Heyman, because during the Austin podcast, he got that text from a writer saying that they need to fire writers. Yeah. So I mean, obviously, that's you know, and I actually am going to go out here and say in, in closing, I appreciate what Jr. says a lot more than Vince Russo, because Jr. comes off as someone. JR is like, in my opinion, he's a legend. Oh, yeah. And he knows what he's talking about, and he obviously still cares about it, and he's still involved. Whereas I feel like Russo is just trying to grasp onto that last little bit of notoriety that he has left. Mm hmm. But uh, so next week, you know, we'll talk more wrestling, uh, and I'll get into my reasons for my lack of love for TNA.
<laughs> Outside of it sucks. Everybody, please go to change.org, sign the petition, CM Punk versus JDF. Let's make it happen. There will be a link below this episode description. You can click. I'll be including it now until the end of time. Pretty we'll much. Just beat this horse to death. All our Facebook friends, you all suck. Yeah, except for those of you that have actually, I actually have had some people. There's like 79 signatures. Okay, yeah, 77 because no. you don't count me and you. So 77 signatures between our two friends list and people who we don't even know on other pages have signed. Like, come on, man, really? If somebody had the nerve to ask me, hey, would you like to sign this petition? Really? Yeah. And I know for a fact they didn't sign mine, so I was like, man. It's like, bump get, you. Get, get bent, dude. <laughs> it's like, get the F out of here. So anyway, that's this week's The Lockup. Join us back here next week for more wrestling talk. As always, you can get everything we do, comics, remix. The website will be being updated soon by our man, Junior Ruiz. I'm doing it when I can. I mean, like, hey, man. It's getting there. I, get you know, there. I, this, let, let, me, let, me, let me make something perfectly clear about this brand. We're fans. We do this because we're fans. We do yeah, it for other fans. Yeah, we're not professionals. We're not making any money. Yeah, we don't get paid for this. This is something we love doing, so we do it. If something happens of it, because of it, awesome you know it's granted us some great opportunities Mm -hmm. um so we can sit back and be like hey i did this i did that but like i said we do it because we have a passion for it we don't get paid for it we still have our daily lives we still have uh we have our families you know i actually just got a promotion at my job to full time um so i mean i am up at 5 30 every morning i don't get to the house till like 6 30 7 o'clock at night you know i gotta be a father so this this is a labor of love yeah that's created with free time yeah and then the free time even there is very limited my free time is weekends and we're recording i'm out in the cave of wonders we're hunting like i'm trying to get everything done all at once you're trying to get everything that you possibly want to do done in these like i was gonna work on it last night i had the laptop open on the kitchen table i plugged it in so it wouldn't die on me i was like all right i put harley to bed i knocked out dude i woke up like at 4 30 in the morning stumbled to the kitchen just closed the computer (laughs) went to sleep but it'll get there, and when it's there, we'll let you know. Until then, you can still check us out: YouTube, Facebook, make sure Twitter, make Instagram. sure to check out our past episodes of the Lockup. Make sure to check out uh, our episodes of uh, Breaking the Fourth Wall, which is our comic-related segment. Make sure to check out Alex's reviews remix, where he talks uh, basically toy reviews. You know, um, show him some love too. And check out the forty-plus back issues of the original <laughs> Spinner Rack. Yeah, for the love of Pete. Yeah, uh, we actually have. A fourth show starting uh, soon. It's going to be a once a month show. It'll be about an hour long in length. Um, that's going to be hosted by myself and by Alex. Um, and the reason we're doing it once a month is, well, because I guess it's an hour long and we have lives. You know, we have our personal lives and stuff. But we feel by doing it once a month, it'll uh, it'll resonate more with fans and hopefully they'll look forward to it. Mm-hmm. You know, so more on that later. But, yeah. That's it for now. All right, peeps. That's all I got. See I'm done week. being the promo whore. You're done. You're done promo whore. I'm done. Big B comics remix. Junior comics remix. Alex comics remix. Correct. Dot com. Dot keezy for all your questions, criticisms, Com- praise, comments, complaints, whatever. See you next week, peeps. Later.